Hello, Reed Redden here with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. I want to talk to you today a little bit about some of the common aborting issues that we have in the sheep and goat industry. So it's that time of year, the group of ewes behind me here are all about to lamb or they already have lamb, there's some lambs in the background. It's an exciting time of year, that next generation, uh, you know, whether you're a breeder or you're just in the industry, this is what you raise these animals for, is to raise a good healthy kid crop and, and harvest it's a really great wool crop and and those lambs are a big part of, of what we do and why we do this the unfortunate part of this is also the time of the year that that we have some big issues and people have contacted us about you know some abortion problems that are going on and, and it happens year in and year out and so i want to talk to you about some of these common abortion diseases that that hits the that plagues the sheep and goat industry the two most common are probably chlamydia and vibrio um, these are these are out there. They're in flocks and herds. They kind of establish themselves where they only affect a few animals, and we don't really know what's going on. Maybe it's just the the first time lammers or first time kidders, and we just kind of chalk it up to bad luck. But what happens is is some of those get sold and moved to a different flock, and then they're moved into a flock or a herd that's naive to this. And then when they lamb or kid, they shed this. And it may not affect them or their lamb crop because they have some antibodies to protect it from stopping that pregnancy, but it affects all the rest of them. And that's when we see the kind of catastrophic type issues where we'll have maybe 30 to 60% of a flock or a herd abort. And when I say abort, I mean that these lambs or kids are being born a week or two weeks early. They're really small, they're underdeveloped, the placenta around them will be hard, the cotyledons won't look good in the placenta. When those type of things are happening, it's really important that you work with your veterinarian and try to diagnose it. Uh, not all the times are you gonna get a good positive diagnosis, the, the tissue might not be good enough, and so that's really frustrating, but it's important that you do so that you can make long-term uh, management strategies accordingly. Now, I'm not also saying that you know the first time you have a, a a lamb or a kid born that's too early doesn't survive, you rush off to, to do different things. That's something that you and your veterinarian need to work with. In most cases, they're gonna advise you that one um, or maybe two, maybe just chalking up to bad luck, but when that hits three, four, there's a big problem going on and we really need to get on top of it and address it. Um, there's some other less common ones. Uh, leptospirosis is probably more common in beef cattle. Uh, maybe it affects sheep and goats sometimes. I personally haven't heard of anyone that really positively diagnosed it. I think one of the issues with this is, is it probably moves around and it gets in and then they lose the pregnancy but they don't abort. So we never really knew that it exactly happened. Um, another one is toxoplasmosis. Um, this one happens whenever cats uh, will have, a, you know, have some kittens and all that birthing fluid gets in hay. So they love to go in the hay barn and then that hay gets fed to pregnant sheep or goats and then they'll have an issue with aborting because of toxoplasmosis. Uh, Q fever is kind of a nasty one. It's really hard to predict. We don't know exactly uh, how it always works. It's, it's not real repeatable, but it's a pretty nasty one. Uh, what's really bad about Q fever is it can have some pretty serious human health consequences as well. All of these um, are somewhat zoonotic, meaning that you can get it from the animals by being around them. And the highest risk period is, is an animal that's aborted or even a newborn that's had that's healthy. If they had it in the past, they're shedding a bunch of it. You know, if we get it on our hands and then, you know, touch our face or eat something without washing our hands or whatever that may be, we can get exposed to it. Uh, a lot of them may just cause some some pretty mild symptoms or you may just not feel well. But these, these, these ones at the top are really important that if someone is pregnant or planning to become pregnant, uh, the same type of things can happen in humans as, as happens in the livestock with abortions and, and issues with that maternal um, you know, lamb or, or kid go interface inside. So it's really important that we take some precautions here to protect our own health and also, you know, to protect the health of the flocks and herds. Many of these have vaccines, but it's not very clear cut. Um, you know, like chlamydia, uh, it, it, there are several strains that are out there and only some of those strains are in the vaccine. We don't really know that on the front end. And so, um, you know, vaccines are a good insurance policy, but it's not going to cover everything. Other things that we could do to prevent these would be using antibiotics. 
uh, but you're really going to be giving that to the whole herd or the whole flock, and we're normally not going to do that unless uh, you know something's going on or we know something had happened in the past and we're trying to prevent it. Something that you and your veterinarian uh, need to work through. But that's not even as clear cut because some of the Vibrio strains um, actually have tetracycline resistance that's out there. So you may not use the common antibiotic that you use or you may have to use higher doses. Again, really important that you work with your veterinarian um, regarding these diseases and how you could kind of prevent them and protect yourself and your flocks kind of going into the future. So again, hopefully you have a, a good, productive lambing, kidding season. You don't run into these problems. If you do, uh, be proactive. Work with your vet. Get the good, fresh samples that you need. Sometimes it's, it's, um, it, it's challenging because if we don't get those fresh samples in time uh, and don't get them to the diagnostic lab quick enough, they can't make a positive diagnosis. And we don't know what our treatment or preventative strategy you know, needs to be uh, going forward. Uh, your veterinarian may also want you to take blood from the ewes to look for antibody levels or titers for these different diseases out there to try to figure out what's going on. So it's important to be proactive uh, when there's a clear and present issue going on. So with that, best of luck and have a great day.